Do you know how to eat so that your body will burn fat more efficiently? Well, there are three types of macronutrients that your body needs to survive and thrive. Carbohydrates, fat, and protein. They all give your body energy, but they all work in different ways, which is why you really need all three, and you can't really skip out on one long-term. I have other videos on protein and carbs. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about fat. This is a pretty critical topic because fat provides you with more calories than any of the other macros. And we usually don't think about fat much because it comes naturally inside of our food. Fat is kind of hiding among protein and carbs. We only really consciously eat fat when we put butter on our bread or oil into a frying pan. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I'm a certified elite personal trainer nutrition coach, and PSA ranked and rated figure skating coach. It always surprises me how often people engaged in sports don't have a great grasp on nutrition. And I often provide nutrition coaching to athletes to help improve their sports performance. But here's the thing, it's not just athletes. I often work with parents, families, people just like you, and even other coaches to help them create change and get real results. Poor nutrition can lead to fatigue, dehydration, and poor health, all of which negatively affect your body's performance, whether you're an athlete or not. Fueling your body correctly is often overlooked, but it is a critical aspect of sports and exercise performance, as well as academic and work performance, and even your emotional well-being. So nutrition is a huge part of fitness and wellness. In this video, I want to make you conscious, conscious of fats, because they may significantly impact your health in the long run. This is where most low carb enthusiasts, like those on a keto diet or maybe the Atkins diet, often get things wrong and make mistakes that can actually impact their health later on in a negative way. First, we need to understand what kind of fats there are. You've probably heard of saturated fats and unsaturated fats. The first one is harder, usually solid at room temperature, like butter. The second one is softer and liquid at room temperature, like olive oil. You may have heard that one is good for you or one is bad for your health, but let's break it down a little. Saturated fats, butter, bacon, coconut oil. These are solid at room temperature. And this is because of the long, straight molecule of the fatty acids that it consists of. Saturated fats come mainly from animal sources, but not always. There is coconut oil. Then there are the unsaturated fats. These are soft or even liquid at room temperature. And the reason is because of their curvy fatty acid molecule structure. Unsaturated fats come mainly from plant and fish sources. So which one should you eat? And which one is dangerous? Which one is healthier? The answer may surprise you. Let me explain. In studies over the last two decades, we've realized that it isn't dietary fat that causes cardiovascular disease. Rather, it's metabolic syndrome and inflammation that plays a bigger role. So we can eat both kinds of fat. That being said, there is a difference. Unsaturated fats, and we sometimes call these healthy fats, they have some very cool and metabolic benefits that saturated fats just don't have. We'll go over those in a second. The other thing to consider is that there's rarely just fat in animal sources. Fat comes along with protein and carbohydrates. So there is a difference in getting your fat with bacon full of antibiotics and hormones or from seeds that have amazing micronutrients and fiber in addition to good fats. So what does unsaturated fat do that saturated fat doesn't? Unsaturated fat has been proven to lower inflammation, boost your metabolism, improve brain function, the hormonal system, and the nervous system. The most beneficial unsaturated fats are omega-3s, especially those that come from cold water, wild caught fish, such as salmon, mackerel, herring, cod, and tuna. Omega-3s boost your metabolism, lowers inflammation, improves brain function, 
and lowers the risk of many diseases like cardiovascular disease, dementia, and even some cancers. We don't have enough omega-3 fat in our diets nowadays because we don't eat as much wild-caught fish as we used to. But it's time to return to this diet. And if it isn't possible to eat that much wild-caught fish, you could also consider taking a good quality omega-3 supplement. I like this one from Thorne or this one from Garden of Life. There are links to them in the description down below. But remember, before you take any supplement, it's always a good idea to discuss these with your doctor before you take them. So how much omega-3 do you need? At least two grams of pure omega-3 a day, but ideally four to 10 grams. And are there any other kinds of fats? Yeah, there's processed or hydrogenated fats. We sometimes call these trans fats. They're the worst of all. Hydrogenated fats are liquid vegetable oils that are processed to make them creamy because they convert some of the unsaturated fats into saturated ones through a process called hydrogenation. And this process also rearranges the molecular shape of the remaining unsaturated fats. So the resulting shape is abnormal. This is why we call hydrogenated oils trans fat. And trans fats may be particularly dangerous for the heart and may pose a risk in developing certain kinds of cancers. Margarine is an example of a hydrogenated trans fat. But trans fats are often sometimes added to processed foods to extend the shelf life. So things like sausages, crackers, ice cream, commercial baked goods, donuts, cookies, candy, potato chips, dressings, fast foods, processed foods, and fried foods often contain hydrogenated oils or trans fats. Because they're processed and because they're not good for you, I really suggest that you keep them to a minimum. Small amounts from time to time may be okay, but I'd rather you get your fat calories from better sources. So what kind of fat should you eat? We get our saturated fat with our protein and carbohydrates by default. So we should aim to eat as much as our fat calories from unsaturated sources, as much as we can. Ideally, I suggest you get at least half your fat calories from unsaturated sources and try to get at least two grams but plus four grams is better from omega-3 sources. That guarantees you'll get the maximum positive effect on your metabolism and health from fat. What other good sources are there for unsaturated fat? Extra virgin olive oil, seeds and nuts, avocado and olives, eggs, and cold water fish as we've already talked about. How many calories should you be getting from fat? Basically, all the calories that don't come from protein or carbohydrates can come from fat. Just like protein or carbohydrates, eating more fat than your body can use as energy can build up as excess fat tissue in your body. This is a mistake that I mentioned earlier that low carb enthusiasts like those on Atkins or keto diets often make a mistake with. They think that as long as they eat fat, they can eat as much and whatever kind they want. And the truth is that this can often lead to a slowed metabolism, higher cholesterol levels, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, and other nasty surprises. One last question that I get asked frequently is what kinds of foods should I avoid? And what can I eat to lower my cholesterol levels? Here's another answer that may surprise you. The so-called bad cholesterol that we have circulating in our system comes from our liver and is caused by visceral fat. The only thing that matters in this case is that you keep your visceral fat as low as possible. In theory, even if you eat nothing but eggs all day for an entire year and lose visceral fat, your cholesterol levels would go down. That being said, there is a population of people who have a mutation in their liver genes that generates cholesterol in response to eating lots of saturated fat and processed trans fats and hydrogenated fats. 
Those people should take their fat sources more seriously and monitor their cholesterol levels much more closely. You should aim to eat more unsaturated fats because saturated ones come automatically with your food and don't have the same kind of benefits that unsaturated fat does. You should give special attention to omega-3s that you'll get from cold water, wild-caught fish, even in small amounts. The effect of omega-3s on your body's natural ability to burn fat is impressive. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what action you're going to take to change the way you consume fats. And if you're looking for some new delicious breakfast ideas, check out my new free protein packed breakfast recipe guide. Just go to amyverka.com slash freebies. It's right there. You can download it. And there's lots of other stuff you can download on that page too. And you don't have to just pick one. You can download as many of those things as you'd like as my gift to you for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends and on social media too. I post at least three videos every week that can help you find simple but life-changing habits. So if you're new here, remember to subscribe and tap that bell so that you never miss a video. This is Amy, thank you for watching. I will see you real soon.